so welcome to episode six of Hello Hugh the show. Now we are heading into December which is of course party season and I couldn't think of a better guest to have on at this time of year to help us get into the celebratory mood. It is the costume and fashion designer and Sophie Koshevelu. So thank you for joining me. Hi, well thank you for having me. <laughs> And we are here to chat about colour. Um, and I mentioned there the sort of party season and celebrations. And that really feels like a sort of theme, a sort of joyful theme in your work. But how would you actually describe the aesthetic of what you do? Um, well, yeah, I think it's colourful. Uh, it's playful. Uh, it's like eccentric. Um, and then, yeah you don't it's funny like you it's not about taking yourself seriously i would say like just having fun with clothes and the way you dress up so um, you've actually studied at central st martin's which is a really renowned art school um so the aesthetic that you have now was that something you had before you went to college or is it something that you you know been creating from when you were younger um, I think well, that I always love colours and everything, uh, but I come from France, so uh, if you know French girl, like, I don't know if you watch like, Emily in Paris, which is like very cliche, but it's, it's kind of, it's a bit true, like the way how French people dress, mm -hmm. so everybody dress black and very uh, traditional, so even you know just wearing like a colorful jumper like this would be like oh my god like that's that's a bit too much so i was wearing color but i guess uh, i really start experiencing um more when uh i i came to london and then really it's like everything exploded because i seen people that were taking the color like so like further and i was oh my god like actually i'm such like a small player i need to to upgrade my game really. So I start wearing a bit more and more coming to London and then, and also yeah, coming to St. Martin. It's really interesting um, what you say there because there is that stereotype about sort of French women wearing, you know, very sort of like sophisticated and sort of like, I guess more formal type wear. Um, so it's great. And I've seen some photos of you in France wearing your incredible outfits sort of <laughs> against these like you know, historic backgrounds or buildings. And it's such a wonderful contrast, <laughs> which is which is really, really lovely. Um, but in terms of colour, um, what role does, does colour actually play in your life? Oh, well, it's really big, big role. Like it's, uh, it's everything. It can really, it can actually, yeah, change my, my mood or that if I feel a bit, uh, sad or under the weather, just wearing some color, like just like lift my, my, my mood. So, and I can't like, um, yeah, I can't really wear black or, uh, and people say, oh, but you know, black suits you, but I just feel not me, like not wearing collars. And what's amazing is that your work is very colourful, um, but you are as well, because I think there are some designers who make quite colourful pieces, but they themselves are a bit more reserved, whereas you seem to actually have that across both of your lives, so your sort of work life and your personal life. Yeah, it's true, it's true because sometimes I, have, I know I have friends also, really colourful designer, and when you met them, they're like all minimalistic black, kind of comme des garçons, uh, very like structural clothes. Uh, but I think it's because, yeah, like some people like to have uh, a, a separation between their work and, and they, um, and themselves, which, I mean, I, I kind of understand, but I, I guess for me, it's like a continuity. So I'm kind of, yeah, I'm my work, my work is me. Uh, I'm also, I kind of use myself a lot as a, face of my brand uh, because I don't have anyone one else so it's yeah for me it's like um, it's merging into each other I love to use lots of toys um, like lots of elements from childhood because I think that's also part of my style is having something playful and and when people see you they're like oh I used to play with uh, these toys when I was a kid 
and create connection with people. So, so I use lots of dolls as well. Uh, I use Lego. I use, so today I have like some little characters, so some that uh, I found in some um, car boots. Um, behind me I have some um, Mr. and Mrs. Um, so yeah, like lots of toys from, from childhood really. You actually um, do a lot of sewing as well. So is it difficult to sew with, I guess, these little like 3D pieces? Um, yeah, but what I, I find out is actually sewing is kind of the most secure way to, 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 to put stuff together uh, because sometimes glue um, doesn't hold stuff when, because these clothes stuff are moving. Uh, so you need to make it like quite strong. So I, I, do, lots of, I do lots of drilling um, and then so I make hole and then I stitch stuff together and I find that the way stuff really, and actually, and then I glue on top of it. Mm -hmm. So the glue kind of secure the hole, like, and the thread. Um, so yeah, I find that's a more like basically secure way. And also it gives a bit more dynamic because when you just stick stuff, it, it, it could be a bit flat sometimes, where when you stitch and sew stuff, you, you give like a nice like texture to things. And obviously it's like kind of coming from my background in, in, in costume and, and fashion. And so I, when I, I learned to sew, so that I could apply to, to making more like 3D pieces, as you said. So you mentioned the fashion there. Um, your work has been featured in loads of different fashion shows. And I know you sort of work backstage at fashion shows as well. So what have been some of the memorable um, sort of events and shows that you've been involved in? Oh yeah, I've, I've done quite a, a lot actually. I mean, thanks for <laughs> reminding me. Uh, but for example, yeah, last year I've done a London queer fashion show, uh, which was yeah really good at the Victorian uh, Albert uh, Museum of Childhood. Um, I've done I have a Lego dress shown at the London Fashion Week. Um, I've done a few fashion show at a more artwork galleries. I so saw, for example, at the, at the St. Pancras Hospital. Uh, basically, I like to do fashion show, but uh, not, which are not really traditional catwalk. So often it's not that part of um, like the fashion week in itself, but it would be aside from it or in an unconventional venue. Um, and it's more... I like it to make it like not like kind of elitist and, and it's like kind of open to everyone so people don't feel it's like oh it's fashion like uh, we should be like super important people or we're not like hyping up like it's not about hype it's, it's really like about um, having fun and also um, like show some diversity on the catwalk so uh, I want to use like a really model but more like performer or friend. It really does just seem like you know you're putting your own stamp on that which is brilliant and I also love the way that you don't just make these incredible outfits but you have such a, a visual idea about the sort of concepts and the way you photo shoot them because like your Instagram is a uh, feed isn't just filled with like pieces of jewelry or accessories but you really have really artistic photo shoots as well so when do you start thinking about how you're going to style your products is that something that comes before you make a piece or do you think of it while you're making it or do you wait till it's finished and then it sort of comes to mind um, yeah, I think because I also study like drama, I did lots of performance, so I like I really like to create a, a narrative um, around the pieces, so to show like there is a concept and it's it's not only uh, clothes, but it's really part of, um, of of a bigger like narrative, and and I'm really lucky because yeah, my my partner uh, Anthony Lysett is is photographer, so we can actually create those those image together, and I think we we sharing kind of a, a same vision of uh, of of colors. So I, I think I'm quite lucky because I can produce from from home um, some some very like nice and quality image. Um, without like too much you know like having a whole team um, just by ourselves really. 
So you do make sort of accessories um, and you make clothing, so whole outfits. And now you're making the face masks as well, which you're actually making since yeah. uh, actually COVID hit. So for many, many months, you've been making the masks. And what are your actual favourite things to make? Um, I, I don't know. I don't have a favourite because everything is quite different. I will say, you know, the bigger outfits, uh, they're more challenging. Uh, but they're kind of more re rewarding. So maybe I don't enjoy so much the process because it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's complicated. But when you have a finished piece, it's like, oh my God, like, yeah, you can do a, a really amazing photo shoot. Um, but yeah, I've really, I've really enjoyed doing the mask uh, during lockdown because I felt that there is so much, um, yeah, it's so much you can actually explore because it's like a, a complete like new medium for me. So I I started like to to play with lots of elements. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would say, yeah, maybe the bigger piece are, are more creative, uh, but they're also more challenging. So it's good to have a bit of a mix. So when, you know, you're maybe not um, like, in the mood, you can do something smaller and a bit more safer in a way, and then go back to the like bigger piece. When I was scrolling down your Instagram feed, uh, just before we started talking, I realized you've got such a huge body of work. Like you must have created like thousands of things like over the years. <laughs> do you actually keep pieces or do any of them ever get sort of recycled into new pieces? Yeah, it's funny, like people ask me, like, where do you store all your stuff? Uh, and well, I mean, the, for example, the attic of my boyfriend's uh, parents is like full of stuff. Uh, so it's like my boyfriend's like, we need to go there and sort it because like, you don't even know where it's there. I have stuff at my parents in France. But oh, like, well, the good thing is also I work on commission. So like, thanks God stuff like sell. So then it goes. And so lots of things you see, actually, I don't have because I sold them. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, yeah, I recycle lots of things. So lots of the costume, um, I, I, well, it's sad because I have to tear them apart and then make something else, but it's part of the process. Um, so when people like stylists want to borrow something or they're like, oh, can we borrow this dress for a shoot? I'm like, oh, sorry, it doesn't exist anymore. I'll make something else because, yeah, especially in London, you can't stock everything. So you call yourself a costume designer and a fashion designer. Um, do you kind of draw a link, but, I, mean, I, I mean, do you draw a separation between the two of them whereby you think of some things as costume and some things as fashion? And, or how do you kind of make that decision and what is it led by? Well, for me, it's like completely linked, uh, like especially like um, studying uh, drama and kind of fashion, like it, it was like just connected. Uh, I think it's more like a, maybe a society thing or people, people like to label things. So, oh, this is more fashion. This is more costumey. Um, so I will say, yes, there is stuff more design and you think it's more fashion and stuff where maybe that gets you into a character which are more um, uh, costume. But for me, it's like, because I like to make costume stylish. So I think, and, and I think that's also, that's also why I love like drag uh, because drag really makes costume like fashion and, and stylish. Um, so I was, yeah, for me, like it's, uh, it's kind of a, a meeting point, uh, where like fashion meets costume. So you have like statement piece where you're like, wow, like, um, but at the same time, like you could wear it in, in, in the everyday life and don't look like you're going to a costume party. I love the idea of, of, yeah, costume actually just being the norm as well. It's just, it's really <laughs> fun. And, you know, like, I think people can be too serious about clothes. So it's wonderful to see, you know, you sort of turning, turning its head, you know, what people perceive as fashion. Um, what does it feel like for you when you actually see people wearing your pieces? Oh, but I feel amazing because then I felt, okay, I'm not crazy. I'm not the only one like wearing it. Uh, so, and I, I feel like he, he, he suits people really well. Like it, uh, it really like make them looking so amazing. Um, especially 
uh, I think like a man and like I love like uh, styling men in my piece uh, and I feel for example um, men should experiment more with color and fashion because they, they just look like amazing. So, um, as we are coming towards Christmas, I know Christmas is going to look quite different to, to most Christmases, mm -hmm. um, but what sort of tips would you have for people at this time of year to get a bit more courageous um, with their outfits and to perhaps get a bit more playful with them? Um, like, yeah, try to dress up even if you have like nowhere to go or, you know, even if you go to the pub, uh, like really like make the most of it. Uh, for example, I'm planning to go to a show uh, soon. If it's not cancelled, I'm, I'm really going to dress up and I don't care if I'm going to be the only one because I really, I really need that uh, to like, to, yeah, I really need to feel like amazing just for one event. Um, so yeah, I would say to people to yeah, experiment more uh, because you, you're not going to regret it. Like once you try it, you, you don't want to go back because you get more noticed and, and you know, people sometimes they, they, they don't want to, especially as women and also older women, they don't want to be, they don't want people to look at them and actually, um, it's, it's a great feeling when, when people, like, it, it really gives you confidence, I think. Absolutely. I totally agree. And I think wearing your pieces will automatically give people confidence as well. I know you've got your online store um, that you stock some really made pieces, but you also do the bespoke as well. You bring so much joy to people um, in terms of them wearing your pieces and also just seeing you in the street or seeing you at an event because you just are like literally walking joy. And, and I've seen you in real life on many occasions. Oh. And you enter and you're well, you know, so fabulous. Well, you're the same, like you're always like so colourful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely, like you enjoy it so much. Um, but thank you so much, Antipi, for joining me um, on Hello Hugh. It's been a real pleasure to just understand a little bit more about your little colourful life. Thank you, it's been great. Like, you had a great question. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed the episode with Anne-Sophie Koscivelli. Do check her out. Her Instagram is just filled with so much fun and it really will just lift your spirits. At any point in any day, if you just need to feel energised, then check that out. Now, this is my last episode in the first season, uh, which is the end of November uh, 2020. I'll be back with more inspiration in the new year. Now, if you can think of anybody that I should interview for this series, or if you would like to be interviewed as well, because you are a chromatic character filled with colourful stories then please get in touch you can leave a comment or a message or just uh, message me dm me so on finally social. i just want to say thank you to everybody who has watched my first six episodes i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you enjoyed getting to know my guests as well i'll still be on socials uh, over the next month of december so do look out for my colourful posting and i look forward to hearing from you as well and uh, see you again in the new year <laughs>